Hi and welcome to another video tutorial from One Man Background. My name is John and in today's video tutorial we will be looking at a tool called NetCat. NetCat is a computer networking service for reading from and writing network connections using TCP already. NetCat is um, called the Swiss Army Knife for TCP because it has so many features. It, uh, it can be used to do port scanning, it can be used for transferring files, it can be used for doing port listening, it can be used as a backdoor and so on. So today we will see uh, how to use NetCat. So as I mentioned earlier, NetCat can be used uh, for doing chatting, port scanning, beta gapping, used for remote administration, which can be also used as a backdoor, file transferring, etc. So uh, NetCat is Based, uh, it's a client server model which means it can work both as a client as well as a server and it's cross platform which means it can be installed on Mac, Windows and Linux it's pre-installed on a Linux machine for Windows you have to go and install uh, you can download uh, netcat from downloadnetcat.com and once you download the package you get a RAR or a zip file just ex extract all those contents uh, to your C directory. Once you do that, just go to your command prompt. Just do cm. Sorry. Navigate to your C directory, and then just put an nch h uh, for help, so you can see the various commands that it uh, netcat has. So so we'll go to netcat briefly in a moment's time. So netcat is pre-installed in the next machine, running backtrack and you can see him see. There we go. So the first thing that I want to show you here is netcat can be used to chat. So to do chatting there should be a server and there should be a client. So the server will be listening on a particular port. Uh, while the client connects to that port, so it will first see our IP address. So, slight problem over here. What I found out is I set my internet connection to NAT, so I'm not, I'm not be able to connect to it. So let me just shut down my machine and put my computer in bridge mode. There we go. So I'll just log in. Electric machine. So now I should have. Okay, there we go. So we have an internal IP 192.10.0.101, which is accessible from the other machine, which is also in a bridge mode. Let's see this uh, machine's IP address in a moment. So it's 103 and this is 101. So as I said, uh, server should be listening and the client will be connecting. So to listen on a board, you need to enter NC. Uh, for listening, it's L, uh, V for verbose, and the port uh, mentioned by P. So I'm going to listen on say 6000. So what will happen is uh, NetCat will be listening on this board. Now the client has to connect to that particular port. Uh, so I'll just do NC. The IP address is 192.10.0.101 on port 6000. So once I do that, I'm connected 
to their machine uh, the server so I can just go on to chat say, say hi over here you can see let's say hi so the problem here was that uh, we didn't have any indication that we have connected to our server so what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to go and put a welcome message when the client connects to it. so when the client connects to our server so I'm just going to say echo put an E option there then say hi uh, have connected to our net cat and then I will just pipe it to that cat and see LVP that's the listening verbose and port so I'm going to again 6000 listening port 6000 when I connect, I will get a message saying, Hi, you have connected to our NetCap server. So now, uh, by this means, you can do chat. So, the next feature that I want to do, show you here was port scan. So, NetCat can be used to do port scanning. Uh, before that, I'll just start my uh, HTTP server on my Backtrack machine. So, now that's the first thing I'm show So, NetCat can be used. Uh, to do port scanning, let's see the command that we need to enter for the port scanning. So there's a Z option which is used for scanning, and there's also a W option which will uh, just have a time on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke these two commands Z option for port scanning, and I'm going to say W C2 5 seconds for scanning a uh, timeout basically. Then I'm going to scan 192.10.0.101 and I'm going to give it the port say 75 to 81. So I know that 8 port 80 is open because that's where my HTTP server is running. Let's see if it's correct. And I'm also going to give a purpose so that I don't know what's happening. BWB. So there we go. Uh, connection was refused on port 81. As that means the port is closed. And as expected, port 80 was open. Now, the third uh, feature that I wanted to show you here was banner grabbing. Banner grabbing is a technique by which you find out what service is actually running what, uh, on a particular port. So, for example, port uh, 80 uh, is running a HTTP server. You want to know what service is running and what software is running on that port. So you can just do banner grabbing using netcat. So I'll just do and see and I'm just going to go and connect to port 80. Uh, on port 80. So I'm connected now to port 80. Now I'll set a get request. Get request. So there we get the response from the server, and we can see here Apache. So this is the software that's running. So this can be very useful when you are trying to exploit uh, particular services. So if, uh, if the FTP server is running, you will get a uh, get request and find out what uh, software is running there and the version. So, if there's a public exploit, uh, you can just run the exploit on that port and you'll get a rush. You can exploit the remote machine and you can get a shell over there. So, third one I want to show, the fourth option that I want to show is for 
used for remote administration that can be also used as well. So Netcat has a wonderful feature over here with the E which can, uh, which we, by which we can actually inbound a program to execute. So you can attach a program to Netcat. What I mean is uh, if the server is listening on a particular port, you can attach a program. So when the client connects to it, he will be uh, able to connect to that program. So if for example if we connect our bash shell, uh, the client will get his, get access to our bash shell by thereby which uh, you can actually control the whole system. So we have a shell right here. So what I do is bash. Now if I connect on the Get a bash shell. I can confirm it by doing ls, and there we go. We see this stuff. This is the uh, Linux machine, and if you do PWD, you can see this directory. Right? So let's say who am I? It says who. So the, by this method, you can actually uh, do a remote administration if there is a problem. Or to listen on a particular port and connect to your machine and do the work. This can be abused and it can be used as a backdrop. Uh, the same port can be run without knowing the user and thereby which you will be having remote access to that machine. And this shell is called the bind shell because the server is uh, binding certain program and it's called the bind shell. There's something called the reverse shell also, which will be very useful when there's a firewall. So if there's a firewall, uh, for example, it will be on a Windows machine where the firewall is running. So if I file this in a particular port, connect my uh, cmd.exe, and if I try to connect from my Linux machine, Six thousand. I'll be refused. That's because there's a firewall there. Oops. I think the firewall is turned off. So if there was a firewall, uh, my connection will be refused. So as of now, I've just connected and I've got a command shell over here, and I can control the whole Windows machine. If there was a firewall, what happened is uh, you'll not be able to connect. In that case, you can use the reverse shell. Uh, the virtual is the, the client will be listening and the server will be trying to connect to the uh, client with the program that you want to touch. So, what let's take this like this. So, we are the client here, we will be listening to what you want say 6000. And what uh, the server will do is it just won't connect. And see my extra ten thousand one four six thousand and we attach a program to a server so now what happened is I should get a shadow machine. So this is what the reverse As I said, this can be abused and can be used as a backdrop, which I will show you in a tutorial how to execute these codes remotely without the knowledge of the user. So, the next thing that I wanted to show you here was uh, it can, can be used to transfer files. So, it can, can be used to transfer small files. What you can do here is you can create. If I say if I want this to open the same text and I have to 
There we go. So we created a file. Okay, there we go. So we created a file. We're going to transfer this John file. So what you're going to do is first we need to listen. It's going to be the server and see. Six thousand text, whatever file we get, text. So now we are going to touch and send. So the file was transferred successfully. So this is how you can use NetCat um, to do various jobs. So I suggest you want to play this tool as it, as it is a cross platform. You can use it for installing on Windows or use it for Linux machine, Mac. I hope this video is already a bit more. Hope you enjoyed the video tutorial. Thank you for watching. For more hacking stuff, please visit 101 Hacking.